so hello and welcome to today's lesson i hope the journey in complex analysis has been smooth so far okay so in today's video we'll be talking about harmonic functions and also talk about the harmonic conjugates okay so those are the two things you'll be doing today so i'm Bredo Kanrindo, a final year student of mathematics at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I wish you all the best in this lesson. So let's go through. So as I said, we are going to talk about harmonic functions and the harmonic conjugate. So when do we see a particular function is harmonic? And if that function is harmonic, then how do we find the harmonic conjugate? That's what we are going to do today. So let's take a theorem. So we say that a function u of x, y is harmonic if all its first and second order partial derivatives exist and are continuous and satisfy the Laplace equation. So the Laplace equation. So this is the Laplace equation. All right. So we say that a function u of x, y is um, harmonic we satisfy the Laplace equation and this is the Laplace equation so if the partial the second order partial derivative of u with respect to x and that of this is equal to zero so when this is satisfied then we say the function u of x, y is harmonic so it is a condition and it's very very simple so if you realize with everything I've been doing in this course from finding out whether a function is analytical or not, the most important thing is partial derivatives. So if you have a hard time with partial derivatives, I will advise you to revisit that in your multivariable calculus course. Right, so thank you very much. So now let's go to the harmonic conjugate. So if u is harmonic on a domain d, and v is a harmonic function such that u plus iv is analytic then we see that v is a harmonic conjugate of u so i want you to have a look at the definition and try to think around it i know you might not get it instantly now but don't worry as we solve an example you will get it well but it's very simple too comprehend so so far we've taken the definition for what a harmonic function is and we said that a function is said to be harmonic if it's satisfy the Laplace equation which was given here and now we are saying that um, a function v is said to be a harmonic conjugate of u if u plus iv is analytic okay so let's take an example. So the example say we should show that u of x, y equals, so use use the function of x and y, all right, is equal to x, y, is harmonic, and we should find the harmonic conjugate for u. All right, so let's quickly solve this problem here. So note that for u of x, y, for u is equal to x, y, let me put it this way to avoid any confusion, to be harmonic, then it has to satisfy the Laplace equation. And there's a Laplace equation here, right? So that means we have to find the derivatives and check if they are equal to zero. If they are equal to zero, then that means U is harmonic. So you realize that our function U is equal to X, Y. So when you find the partial derivative of u with respect to x, that will give us y. And when you find the square u, the s square, that will give us 0. Now when you find the partial derivative of u with respect to y, that will give us x. When you find the second derivative, you are going to get 0. You realize that we can see that when we add the square u, the s square plus the square u, the y square, we get 0. So it satisfies the Laplace equation then it means our function u is harmonic 
so we've been able to show that it is harmonic indeed so now we are left to find the harmonic conjugate for u so now let's come so now for the harmonic conjugate we let b be the harmonic conjugate of u so since you are letting v be the harmonic conjugate of u then it means that f equals u plus iv will be analytic and it being analytic means that it is going to satisfy the Couch-Riemann equations I hope you remember from our previous videos and these are the Couch-Riemann equations so we have two equations and there is the first equation and there is the second equation right so we are going to use the two Couch-Riemann equations to find for the harmonic conjugate V <coughs> so note that um, from the partial derivative that we found here del u del x was um, y and del u del y was x we are going to employ these two very soon right so but del u del x is equal to y i hope you remember right so that means that when it comes to the first equation we can make the substitution here and when you make we are going to get the v and the y will be equal to y. I hope you get it. But you should know that we have to this v. That's what we are finding for. So what we can do is that we can multiply through by the y. And when we do that, we are going to get what we have here. So we have the v will be equal to y the y. But note that we are looking for v and not the v. So the only way to achieve that is to integrate both sides. So integrating both sides is going to give us v will be equal to y squared over 2 plus h of x right so i'll give an explanation here and here instead of writing just v you can decide to write v of x y because v is a function of x and y all right so here someone will ask why don't we have plus c here because when we do indefinite integral we have plus an arbitrary constant but we have rather a function here okay so it's because our v here is a function of x and y so right now you should know that we're integrating with respect to y so that means that we will have an arbitrary function x but not an arbitrary constant so that's the reason we have plus h of x here it is because it's a partial derivative and not any kind of like not a full derivative i should put it that way so we are going to have v of x i be equal to y squared over 2 plus h of x instead of c so as i said v is a multivariable function it's not a univariate or invariable function so we have an arbitrary function here so now this is our v but we still have to know what this h of x is so to know what this h of x is we are going to use the second Couch-Riemann equation so from the second Couch-Riemann equation we have the v the x equals to negative the u the y right so you could see that we have the v the x and by the grace of by going through what we've done by the grace of god yeah we've been able to find our v right so the v and the x means we have to differentiate the v with respect to x right so now this is our v when you differentiate with respect to x you realize that this component is going to go to zero since it doesn't have any s attached to it so we are going to get the v and the x to be equal to h prime of what x i hope you get this all right so after that then you should know that del u del y from the deri partial derivatives we found here so del u del y is equal to x this place right so del u del y is equal to x so now when you make substitution so whatever you find here we're going to put this one there and here we're going to put negative x then we are going to get h prime of x to be equal to negative x but you should know that we are finding for h of x not h prime of x so the only way we can do that is to integrate once again so when we integrate this is going to give us h of x and here we are going to get uh, you know you know how to when you have a function let's say s of n and you integrate you are going to get s of n plus 1 then all over n plus 1 then use an indefinite integral then plus an arbitrary constant c 
So that's what we have here. So you are going to have negative x squared over 2 plus c. And here it's an arbitrary constant. Sorry. And the reason why it's an arbitrary constant and not an arbitrary function is you could see our h is just a function of x. It is univariate, it's not multivariate. So as a result of that, we are going to have an arbitrary constant, c. Okay. So now that is our h. So now we can come and put our h inside the vein that we found here. Right? So we can put it inside this and then we will have our harmonic conjugate of u. So when we put the um, h inside, we are going to have this for v, right? And therefore, v of x, y equals what we have here is the harmonic conjugate of u equals x, y. So we've been able to find out whether our function which was given was harmonic or not. And we've also been able to find out the harmonic conjugate. So now there is a quick test that I want to go through with you. So after you've been able to find the harmonic conjugate, you should be able to verify whether it's correct or not using the definition of what an analytic function is. And that is what we are going to do now. So for v to be a harmonic conjugate of u, then f equals u plus i v should be analytic. So we have to find out. So now we have this to be our u and this to be our v. So indeed for this v here to be a harmonic conjugate of this u, then u plus i v should be analytic. It being analytic means that it has to satisfy the word Kalchi-Riemann equation. So I've written a, a quick note here in that for f equals u plus i v to be analytic, then it has to satisfy the Kalchi-Riemann equations. And these are the equations. So we have our u and we have our v, so we can go ahead to find for our partial derivatives. So now this is our u. So when you find del u del x, we get y. Del u del y, we get x. Now let's go to our v. So this is our v here. When you find del v and del x, we have what is here. We have negative x finally. And when you find del v and del y, it will give us y. So I hope here you can see that here we have y. And here too we have y. So meaning that del u del x is equal to del v del y. And realize that that is the first equation here. So the first equation has been verified. And the second one says del v del x. So what's our del v del x? So our del v del x is equal to negative x. It's equal to mm -hmm, negative del u del y. So negative del u del y so it's equal to negative del u del y is x so you can see this is also verified so here we have to verify that indeed u and v are said to be analytic so that means that indeed v is a harmonic conjugate of u and what we did was perfectly correct okay so thank you very much and um Unfortunately, I couldn't get a question for you to try your hands on, but you can go to the internet and search for questions and apply this concept and very simple. And um, so our next video is going to be on conformal mappings. So stay tuned. So I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.